What's up everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six, I'm Rob. Today I'm doing an overrated, overpriced video for you. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. This one is gonna go from no age statement all the way over to 25 year old Scotch whiskeys. I'm gonna talk a little bit about everything, uh, starting over here with the no age statement whiskeys. I'm gonna mention two in this category actually because one of them I haven't tried myself and maybe it's very good, but the price is what deters me from buying it and that's the Middleton Berry Crockett. I haven't tried this one like I said, but in most places this is close to $400 and for a no age statement whiskey, I can't justify that price. The other one is the Glenmorangie G Signet. I do wanna change my opinion on this, so I will try it one more time. It's been a long time since I've had it last. I went through a whole bottle. I remember being super disappointed with that bottle. They do say that there's older whiskey in that, but I don't think there's enough to make it a significant whiskey, no pun intended. The Signet is just not that good. It's been around a long time and you do not hear too many people raving about it, especially when they've tried much better younger things. Speaking of which, I'm gonna give you a recommendation in each of these categories. And my recommendation in this category for No Age Statement is Two Brewers pretty much anything. Two Brewers releases whiskeys with chocolate malt, roasted malt, and they're mostly single malts. Um, yeah, they're younger in age. Some are getting up to 12, 13 years old now, uh, but they don't put the age on the bottle, so it can be qualified as, or classified anyway, as a no age statement whiskey. And honestly, you will adore it if you try it. They're from Yukon territories. I can't say enough good things about two brewers, so check them out. Next up is the category of blended whiskey. Now, the famous blends come from Johnny Walker. They've been around forever. Everybody knows Johnny Walker. Anywhere you go, anybody that's heard of whiskey probably has heard of Johnny Walker. I'm gonna specifically talk to the Johnny Walker Blue because that's creeping up to the $400 range now just for the regular blue. They do have some special releases that are bottled at 46% that can be very good. But the problem with Johnny Walker Blue, even if it has older stuff in it, is it's always bottled at a low ABV. It's chill filtered like crazy. It's super light on the palate. Uh, there's added color to it. There's all kinds of things wrong with it. The price is absurd. A much better consistent blended whiskey that I've had is the Flaming Heart from Compass Box. Now I bring this one up in particular because it does also have a lot of older whiskey in it, especially the earlier releases. As of recent, some of them don't have as much older stuff in it, but it tells you exactly what's in the bottle on their website. So um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but all their expressions have a giant ring that shows what's inside and there will be uh, different distilleries labeled all around. Like a tree, depending on how many rings are colored in, that tells you how old that portion of whiskey is. Uh, I'll give you a picture right here so you understand what I'm saying, but really cool stuff. Uh, Compass Box is doing incredible blends. Flaming Heart is one of them for sure, you should check it out. Okay, moving on to age stated whiskeys, I'm gonna start with the 10 year old category and I'm gonna go Irish for my most overrated, overpriced. I'm gonna go anything Dunsville pretty much is overpriced like crazy, especially where I'm from in Ontario. Uh, the 10 year old has two different expressions, obviously there's different wine casks involved, but neither of these are cast strength by any means. And the Dunsville 10 year old PX is uh, over $170. The Dunsville Paulo Curtado 10 year old is I think above $200. That's here of course, uh, maybe you're able to find it for a little bit cheaper where you are, but for that reason, that had to be my most overpriced in the 10 year old category. There's a lot of great options at the 10 year old category. You can get stuff like Ardbeg 10, Benromic 10, um, Springbank if it's available in your area, the 10 year old is much less than the Dunsville 10. But seriously, I'd actually go a few years older in this category for well under that price at the Craig Alecky 13, which is about $80 at the LCBO, consistently available and really, really good whiskey. Okay, so moving on to the 12 year old category here, I'm gonna go with the Yamazaki 12 year old. This is grossly overpriced, over $400 over here. I know that it's probably closer to 150 American in the US in most places, but that's only when it's available and that's not very often at all. So I had to pick the Yamazaki 12 year old because it just recently popped up on shelves in the LCBO and it's absurdly overpriced. Honestly, there's so many great whiskeys in the 12 year old category, but Glen Alecky 12 year old is my favorite. Honestly, I think you would love it too. It's 
relatively inexpensive, less than $100, almost everywhere I've seen it, if not less than actually $80. Uh, so grab the Glen Alki 12 year old instead of most things 12 year old for better whiskey and better price. So for 15 year old whiskeys, there's a few that are overpriced. But I wanted to mention this distillery in particular because they're overpriced across the board and I'm actually pretty disgusted with what they've done over the last few years. And that's the Balvenie 15. This one's always been really expensive. You can't find it anywhere now for less than $300 if you find it at all. Um, anything in their range though is ridiculously overpriced. The double wood is approaching $200 now, which is absurd for a basic whiskey. Balvenie has been super disappointing in the last few years and that's really too bad because they have such quality in that distillery and they've released such incredible things that to see them squander that over the last few years has been truly disheartening. But in the 15 year old category, the Glen Scotia 15 delivers in both price and quality. So get the Glen Scotia 15 instead. In the 18 year old category, I could have probably mentioned this distillery about a thousand times. Um, they can be mentioned in every single category there is for whiskey, but I wanted to specifically mention them for the 18 year old category because I am absolutely disgusted at the price they've chosen for their 18 year old whiskey. I think you know who I'm going to say. It's the Macallan 18 year old uh, single barrel sherry or whatever they call it nowadays. Um, it's grotesquely overpriced. I cannot believe that they believe their whiskey at 18 years old is worth $845 Canadian. It's pretty much that price across the board in Canada, depending on where you are. That's not including or including taxes. Honestly, I, it, I can't say enough about how disappointed I am in this distillery. They had such an incredible reputation that they've absolutely annihilated in the last 10 years. I know they were always catering to a higher demographic or a higher economic demographic than you know people like me that can you know only afford so much but to charge $845 for an 18 year old scotch when your competitors are charging one fifth of that is absolutely a joke so disappointed in McAllen for that price and just in general for their behavior over the last 10 years a whiskey that is still pretty expensive, but I wanted to mention it because it's so similar to the Macallan 18 year old that you're getting almost the exact same product for one fourth of the price is the Tamdu 18. Get that one instead. It's just as good, if not better than the Macallan 18 year old. It tastes so similar, it's scary. And it's like 220 bucks as opposed to 845. So there aren't a ton of whiskeys available anymore in the 21 year old category. It used to be a more popular category, but it seems like it's dying down for whatever reason. Although overrated, overpriced in this category still has to be the Glenfiddich 21 year old rum cask. Uh, I don't know what they're calling it anymore. They've changed the name a few times, but it's still the standard 21 year old 40% rum cask uh, Glenfiddich. Glenfiddich and Balvini are the same company or brother or sister company, whatever you want to call it. There's so many better whiskeys in this category. Some are blends, some are not. The one that I would look for if I were you is the Aaron 21, just a fantastic whiskey and it blows the Glenfiddich 21 out of the water. I'm going to stop at the 25 year old category. So I'll give you one more here and then that's it. And the only reason I'm doing that is because once you reach beyond this, it's absolutely absurd. The prices that you're going to get to, um, and you can't really, how do you equate what's fair and what's not in a category that most companies, distilleries can't even reach because of economic issues and stuff like that. So reaching 30 years old, 35 years old is very rare and maybe rightly so, uh, more expensive. So at 25 years old, it seems in the last few years, the 25 year old category has just blown up in price. I'm not exactly sure what has happened, why there's such a discrepancy between most distilleries having an 18 year old whiskey sub $200 and then a 25 year old whiskey over six, $700. I don't get it, uh, but there's a ton and I can name a ton and I'm not going to name a ton just because it's not worth it. But what I will do is this, I'll tell you, don't buy any other 25 year old whiskeys. Instead, go for one a year younger Buy the Anok 24. 
This is the most exciting thing for me in the Scotch whiskey category right now because it's a $200 integrity bottling at 24 years old, 46%, no added color. It's getting darker and darker every year. They're using higher quality sherry casks to age this or they've put them away and now they've saved them for the right time, which is now in a market where an equivalent bottle is five, six hundred dollars easily. So that whiskey deserves praise. It is definitely underrated, definitely underpriced. Um, and I would avoid pretty much anything else in the 25 year category. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule, of course. Uh, you can get anything from Gordon McPhail from 20 to 30 years old at an absolute steal. I guarantee you, you match up any Gordon McPhail to the distillery that they got that liquid from at the same age and Gordon McPhail will be a fraction of the price of the actual original bottling from that distillery. So Gordon McPhail is another one that I needed to give a shout out here to because they deserve it. That's it for me guys. I hope you like this video. It's a little bit of a different format than I usually do my overrated overpriced, but you know what? I used to do that format a long time ago and things have changed. I have changed. My opinions have changed. I wonder what you guys think about whiskeys in this category. Do you disagree with any of the ones that I said were overpriced and why? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. You can click the bell to get notifications for when I release videos. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, I'm even on TikTok now. Uh, you can support this channel on Patreon as well. Cheers guys.